Hi! In this video, I'll cover a number of elements that can affect stuttering and FPS or frames per second when playing FS2020. Before I begin, I want to set some expectations. If you play first person shooter video games that are jam packed with action and motion, please understand that getting 60 FPS in a flight simulator is not required in order to have an acceptable experience. 30 to 40 FPS can and will provide a very nice, smooth experience in the sim. Additionally, it's not uncommon for FPS to drop momentarily when you enter areas where the application needs to do more work to deliver the imagery on your screen. Clouds or densely populated areas can cause this, as well as making a simple coordinated turn where the view changes rapidly. Any of these can cause slowdowns. And finally, Everyone's system is different. Some of us are using Intel Iris, others AMD Radeon or Nvidia products. As such, I won't cover specifics for any graphic cards. You should be able to find videos on YouTube that cover your specific graphic card and I encourage you to look at those resources. As previously stated, everyone's system is different. These system and application tweaks are non-destructive and if you find that any of them are causing you any issues, you can just revert them as easily as you enable them as appropriate. There is one area of exception and I will point that out when I talk about it. What I will cover is tweaks to Windows to increase performance and tweaks to FS2020 to help as well. Let's start with Windows. First of all, in your search box, type Game Mode, and when the Game Mode settings appears, click on it. Within this, we need to ensure that the recorder system is turned off and that the Game Mode itself is turned off. Game Mode setting is up first, so click on it to turn it off. While Microsoft created this to improve system performance with gaming, it turns out it's ineffective and can cause slowdowns. At the top of the left side, click on Game Bar. Turn this off unless you plan to record your session. You need to make sure this is turned off entirely as it's eating up resources in the background. Now you can close the control panel. There are some other changes you can make to the properties of the Flight Simulator executable file itself. Since it might require a permission change in order to implement this, there's a risk of breaking things, especially if FS2020 is not installed on your boot or C drive. I'll cover these changes here, but be mindful that you might break things and have to contact support. Open a file explorer and under the view tab at the top, make sure that file name extensions and hidden items are both checked. Find your Windows apps folder and open it up. You may need to change file permissions to gain access to it, and there's a risk that by doing so you can break FS2020, so you have been warned. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that show how to make this change, so I'm not including it here. Under Windows Apps, you'll find your Flight Simulator folder like this. Inside of that, you'll find Flight Simulator.exe. Right mouse click and select Properties. Then at the top, click Compatibility. Now click Disable Full Screen Optimizations as this system that MS implemented is broken and can impact your FPS. Now click on High DPI Settings and ensure that Override High DPI Scaling is checked and that the application is selected in the dropdown. Then click OK. OK to get out of the Properties box. At this point, I highly recommend rebooting. Then try to run FS2020. If your system says something like, Microsoft Flight Simulator can't open because it is offline, the storage device might be missing or disconnected, then by changing the permissions, you have impacted Flight Simulator. We ran into this issue and what resolved it for us was to go to Settings, System, Storage, Change where new content is saved, and these other settings and ensuring that they were on the drive where we installed Flight Simulator 2020. In our example, it went from Windows C drive to the D drive. Following this change, it resolved this problem. As previously stated, 
Make the file system property changes at your own risk. One final thing that you can do is once FS2020 is up and running, hit your Windows key to bring up the taskbar, then bring up the task manager by typing taskman in the search field and launching it. Then under the details tab, find flightsimulator.exe, right click on it and set its priority to high like this, not real time, high will serve you better. This last change is not persistent, you'll need to do it every time you run FS2020. It's imperative to ensure that nothing else is running in Windows while you're running FS2020. Anything else running such as a browser or even a file explorer can cause stutter and FPS issues. Now let's move on to FS2020 settings. AI and live traffic. Rather than go into the details of these two things, remember that traffic is a big FPS eater. If you're having stuttering and FPS issues, turn off all traffic elements under the traffic settings in the general settings panel. Additionally, it should be pointed out that any of the online features of FS2020 should be turned off if you're having issues. One final item here is volumetric clouds. If you do want clouds turned on and you're getting stuttering as a result, you might set volumetric clouds to low before giving up and turning them off. Finally, the overall graphic settings. If you find the application is just untenable, pick the low preset and see if you get rid of the issue. If it does, a methodical approach to increasing each of the settings in the graphic settings panel and then retesting after you change each one will serve you best. If you've made all of these changes and you're set to the low setting and you're still seeing stuttering, make sure to examine your graphics card specific utility software and ensure that it has its settings optimized. As a final note here, if you want to see what your FS2020's actual FPS is, you can use the developer menu. Go to Options, General, and at the bottom you can select to turn developer mode on. Once you do this, a new menu will appear at the top of the screen, and if you look at the Options menu here, you'll have an option to display the FPS. That's it for this video. If you hated it, hit the dislike, but if it helped you at all, please hit the like as that really helps me understand what kind of videos are of use to you folks. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, take care.